what a cheap way to obtain resources. It was a business. What a cheap scape way. You have to be that's you 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 broke. You're a broke type of individual. What's good, y'all? It's the Duma Shats React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, see? Today, we're back with another American reaction. Super excited about this video, guys. If you're new to us and, and we're new to you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 100k. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family without further ado. Let's get into the video. He was one of the very last Africans to be taken into slavery in the United States, and the only known African Muslim to have left an autobiography in Arabic about his years in captivity while he was still a slave. Mm. In 1807, Omar ibn Said, a 37-year-old Muslim scholar, was captured by an invading African army in Senegal and sold to slave traders. He was taken from his village in Futatoro to St. Louis Port, where he was sold into slavery. St. Louis is an island at the mouth of the Senegal River that played an important role in the transit of slaves from African countries to the Americas and the Caribbean. This region was one of the main sectors of the so-called triangular trade, which consisted of Europeans coming to West Africa to exchange manufactured goods, like textiles and weapons, in return for slaves. Then the enslaved Africans were loaded onto boats and taken to the Americas, after which the boats would return back to Europe, loaded with raw materials like sugar, tobacco, and cotton. So I just gotta say, what a cheap way to obtain resources. It was a business. What a cheap scape way. You have to be, that's, you, you, you're broke. You're a broke type of individual, and you feel that's how you had to make your money. And if y'all come and try to justify that, <laughs> justify <laughs> you know what I'm saying, that it was, was broke, broke, man. Y'all roll for that. If y'all try to come justify that, I would nah, because you selling a person for guns. You selling a person like you trading them for like stuff so you can have another life, like a better lifestyle. But that's weak. Yeah, that's whack. That's lame. After we just told y'all to stop sending in these slavery That's lame. videos, y'all still <laughs> something sent. Now y'all getting us started all over again. So, it's the last slavery video we doing. So Omar know. did something big though, and I know he's probably not the only one, but mm -hmm. he's highlighted to do yeah, it. So yeah. shout out to him. Being captured during slavery, you know that people are dying during this time. Yep, having a In the process, us. right? In the process of being captured, people are dying. Mm -hmm. He was caught, and my man became a scholar in the process of bondage like yep. that's that's next level thinking that mm -hmm. he already had you feel me so that's survival man that's crazy that's, yeah. yeah these transatlantic crossings saw at least 10 to 12 million people being transported to the americas as slaves Lame. from the 16th to the 19th centuries only the stories of a few have been preserved and ibn Sayyid's is one of them Ibn Said was taken into slavery in 1807, a year before the abolishment of the slave trade took effect in the US, and died in 1864, just one year before slavery was finally abolished. Super lame. His story has come to prominence 150 years Let after his death, mm -hmm. when his memoir was added to the US Library of Congress in 2017. Wow. Before Ibn Said's abduction, he was an intellectual, who spent more than two decades of his life studying the Quran and other subjects in his home country. You know, Correct. and I just want to relate it to how people are today. Like, like the gentleman and the woman that are locked up in prison, you know what I'm saying? And they ain't never getting out. I ain't justifying nothing they did. I'm just saying the geniuses are behind these walls. And they are doing, like... like Sometimes it's just going in different directions of geniusness. <clears throat> right, but we ain't talking about that. We're highlighting the good. Uh, yeah, and they really have, like, I've, I've seen... I've heard of, uh, you know, people in documentaries explain to them, you know, why they're back there. They've had these conversations with these inmates and they would be like on some genius level. Yeah. Just yeah, from sitting there smart. all day some reading people. books. Yeah. And these ideas that they come up with and they mm -hmm. can't really get it out. I've seen some. Well, I ain't gonna talk about it. But yeah, it's like he was in the same position. He was in bondage and he was able to have these genius ideas and he wrote a whole book that's nine books in libraries you yeah me? library of congress okay wow 
Fifteen handwritten pages, Ibn Said's memoir challenges the historical slave narrative about African traditions and culture. His memoir begins with a chapter from the Quran, Surah Al Mulk, with the verses speaking about dominion, sovereignty or ownership, and the conveying of an overarching message that only God has ownership of creation.、Mm. The verses, according to experts, could be understood as a message to the slave owners and slave culture prevalent at the time. Then Ibn Said proceeds to tell his own story. My name is Umar Ibn Said. My birthplace was Futa Toro, between the two rivers. I sought knowledge under the instruction of a sheikh called Muhammad Said, my own brother Sheikh Suleiman Kembe, and Sheikh Gabriel Abdul. I how they got this recording? Maybe. I mean, eighteen hundreds. You know it, what I'm saying? It's a narration. Oh, that's not him. No, you know, look at me.、So. So, that would be crazy, <laughs> right? But yeah, you know, I'm just, I guess I'm too in tune. You're not paying attention to the dates. I'm too in tune. Okay, yeah, yo. you're not paying attention to the dates. About to say. Yes, and, and if you would like to listen to people who were formerly enslaved, we do have a video of them talking to the their audio. words. The actual audio. Yeah, you yeah, see. Yeah. Caught me slipping. I thought we had another time. No, you didn't pay attention to the dates. It's okay.、Baby. Okay. Okay. Continued my studies 25 years, and then returned to my home where I remained for six years. Then there came to our place a large army, who killed many men and took me and brought me to the great sea, and sold me into the hands of the Christians, who bound me, sent me on a board, a great ship, and we sailed upon the great sea a month and a half, when we came to a place called Charleston in the Christian language. There they sold me to a small, weak, and wicked man called Johnson, a complete infidel. Who had no fear of God at all. Ibn Said eventually ran away from his first owner in Charleston, South Carolina, to Fayetteville, North Carolina,、wow. before he was arrested and sold again. But this time, according to his memoir, his new owner, James Owen, was different. Historians who studied Ibn Said's memoir and other documents are of the opinion that Ibn Said spent the rest of his life with the Owen family, who were affiliated with the American Colonization Society, a group that was formed in 1817 to send free African Americans to Africa as an alternative to emancipation in the United States. The group sent thousands of Africans to Liberia. We, the Northern abolitionists and the Southern slave plantation owners. There was a middle way, as they called it, and that middle way was colonization, namely convincing as many slave owners to release slaves or buying them and then sending them to Liberia. And those particular people were not universally, it seems, interested in all slaves. They were particularly drawn to men of culture and education, like Omar was. Ibn Said's skills and intellect made him a well-known person in the entourage, and when he died, man, <clears throat> it's like. I have a whole lot of questions, whole lot of thoughts. Just look how valuable our people were. That they put a price on it. It's like I try. Now, do you like you did me? But it's okay. Make it up. No, it's it's. It's hard to do reactions to this. It is, yeah. It it is. It's like I have so many questions, but I not not just questions. I have so many comments, but because this stuff affects us so much, it's hard to continue to be as open as we are about sensitive topics like this. With people, and not speaking of our true supporters, but people who are not mature enough to be receptive of the things we'll say.、Mm-hmm. So it's really hard, but just to see how valuable our people were, like picking at not even just the labor of our people, not even the bodies. Speaking of the women who had to feed other people's babies, and and you know, had to have their bodies violated to have their babies, and. You know our knowledge, and then not want us to be smart,、newspaper. but not too smart. You know, and I was thinking about that too, because <sighs> the writing that he did, you know, so I know they couldn't, wasn't supposed to read and write. So I wonder how he got around that. But I, I think it's more 
Like, I don't know. They could have mentioned it. But well, when he got his news. Well, there was a whole other religion, you know. So, they probably thought it was just scribble scratch. Oh, you know? and we heard that before. They yeah. didn't know what they was looking at. They yeah. thought they was probably slow there. Oh, look at this crap on the wall. No, that's languages, sir. Yeah. Um, Oof. And then if you, if, you have, like, if you look at it, there's a season for everything. And though he was in such a, a crazy, wicked time, um, he was still highlighted. And he still told his the story. Season still, like, he still thrived in his season. Yeah. And everybody have their season to yeah. thrive. So never look at your surroundings and think that it's stopping you. You still do what you have to do. You look just got to be the, brave. Look at the significance of the day, the year he was born, and the year he died. It works like that's that, That's between yeah. two very important time periods well that's the time period but you know what i mean mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. it's just heavy y'all it's heavy yeah but published an obituary praising him as a pious christian which was unusual in 19th century america which takes us to another point that makes ibn Said's memoir remarkable Although Ibn Said wrote in his memoir that he converted to Christianity, experts analyzing his memoir say otherwise. It's one of the things that uh, a number of Muslims did, you know, that's pseudo-conversion. In some countries, they were just forced. Uh, and they exterior, externally, if you will, conform to that. Um, and then, you know, they actually remain Muslim. The fact that he was, that the opacity of his narrative uh, when he opens it, for example, by a particular uh, surah from the Quran that seemed to me to be included as a kind of a message, a hidden message, mm -hmm. that his owners had no right over him, yeah. uh, that uh, the possession and power all in here is in the hands of God. I like that. I like that. Um, this reminds me of, you know, just hearing how, even most recently, how some people are not able to freely um express their religion you know they could be prosecuted they can you know even be under life um for being who they are and we all know how they weaponize the bible against our people during those times so he could have converted but he didn't convert in his heart and and personally and just if he converted, why would he, you know, start off his whole memoir with, with that, with the Quran, scriptures right. from the Quran? That's right. You That's know. Right. Oh. That this seemed to be to kind of go against the narrative of his, uh, of his uh, conversion, uh, right, or of his uh, slavery itself. But whether his conversion was real or was a facade for protection like many enslaved Africans in the 19th century, Ibn Said's memoir stands as an important document for the history and narrative of African heritage in the United States. The whole operation of the slave trade depended upon willfully neglecting the origins of enslavement. And that's one of the reasons why a text like Omar's is so important because it recovers that suppressed history. I mean, slavery is a silencer. Mm. It denies the voices of uh, captive Africans and enslaved people in the Americas. So recovering this text is so important to getting that history back and understanding the lies and violence that were really at the root of the Atlantic slave trade. And again, you gotta like imagine the stories that are still untold. Because whenever they was in position to do whatever they was told to do, they was told to not read and mm -hmm. not write. But if they were able to actually have write time to it? read and write about oh man, this would have been, pfft. yeah, everybody would have been kind of like on board what's going on. Yeah. It, it wouldn't be told through movies. It wouldn't be right, told right. through, like, how would they be seeing it, like, through these documentaries and stuff through whatever platform. Mm -hmm. But the actual book itself, yeah. oh man, that would be crazy. That would be crazy. A Sierra novel. From what? back in the day? What the what? Child would have been graphic, okay? Could you imagine? <laughs> Man. Could you imagine? <laughs> I mean, that's what it is, though. I feel like that's another reason why they told them not to read and write, because when they was on that land, they did a lot of that. that, what, that, uh, what, that what kind of pencil that was? What, the quill pen? The quill pen with the little black ink. Yeah, the they had a lot of those little things, yeah. writing cursive and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, they knew they was going to document that if they could. Mm, child. And read. They'll know their way out. Yep, 100%. <laughs> yeah, so we hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. Like this video, subscribe, 
turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks if you like to support the channel that way. As well as our reaction request form is in our description box below. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.